What's up people and welcome to Freelancing with Chris of Emery. I'm Chris of Emery and in this video I'll focus on Adobe Character Animator and its quick and easy way to get your character to walk. I'll begin with a short introduction to the walk behavior and then jump straight into the rigging action, step by step. Are you ready? Well then, let's go for a walk. Ah, <sighs> Jesus f***ing Christ, now that wasn't cheesy at all. Now do I shut this f***ing thing off again? Hey! Hey! Now, walking in animation can be a hell of a challenge if you're new to the animation process. And the way Adobe Character Animator helps out is that you basically just need to rig your character and then the built-in walk behavior will take care of the walk for you, much like a customizable template. The way you will have a standing character ready to walk left and right triggered with the arrow keys along with the camera tracking and additional triggers for the face and body can help you speed up your animation workflow like crazy. Do I use this all the time? No, I don't. But it's an amazing tool to have in your animation toolbox. So the way it is set up is basically that we'll have three character folders, standing, left profile and right profile set up so that when no arrow key is pressed down, the standing puppet will be active. And when left or right keys are pressed down, our character will walk in that direction. All three of these profiles will need to be rigged Good thing is that they just differ a tiny bit. You can mainly say that the standing profile will have legs that are non-independent, basically just part of the body, and will have that part of the body fixed to the ground. On the left profile, the artwork will look the same as the standing one, but will have the legs independent in Character Animator, and they will not be fixed at all. The body on this profile will also have some additional handles added in order for the walk behavior to know how to apply the walk behavior to our character. The right profile will have artwork that basically is just flipped version of the left one. And the rigging will look exactly the same as in the left profile. So you might think like I first did that, hey, since I already have a rigged standing character that I just want to add the left and right walking profiles to, let's just rig those profiles. However, since we need to rearrange the folder structure on that character, all that rigging setup will unfortunately break and disappear. So I would say that the best thing to do here is to keep that old character you have, copy the artwork of that one, do a new character animator project and start from the beginning on that one. So we will begin by making sure our character art file is set up correctly with three different folders, standing, left profile and right profile. Then we are going to add a walk behavior to the root structure of our puppet and rig all profiles separately. You can at any time jump into a certain section by hitting the links pinned in comments. Alright, so first of a quick look on my character in Photoshop. It's set up like a pretty basic character with a main folder called plus Chris and then head and body folders inside. Now inside these folders I obviously do have some special stuff just for my character such as hair and whatever. But it shouldn't really matter. Also, instead of just a mouth group, I have a talk group and within that one I have an alt mouth and just a mouth group. The reason for that is basically because I have a standard setup of mouths and then a setup that are mostly just flipped in order to look angry or sad. So I will set up those with a swap set in character animator so I just hit a key whenever I want to activate one of these two mouth setups. So inside the body we have a left arm, right arm, left leg, right leg. And what we want to do now is basically to put head and body into a new group and call it plus standing. I duplicate that group and call it plus left profile. Now before I copy this one I want to just make sure it's set up well for a walk. Legs are obviously already in their own layers but I want the left leg above this waist layer and then I want the right leg below that in the layer structure. Now this isn't at all a structure you need to follow, it's just what I prefer on my character and to avoid unwanted weird lines when the legs are moving. Then we're ready to duplicate this whole profile and do a plus right profile. Of course we also need to flip it in edit, transform, flip horizontal, perhaps also move it a little bit more to the center. 
So now I have a plus Chris folder and within that a plus standing plus left profile and a plus right profile folder. I save my artwork and then it's time to jump into character animator. I import my artwork and make sure character animator picks up on the uh, left and right profile tags. And then I add the walk behavior to the root folder of my character. We can double check so that the walk behavior picks up the views automatically. It might seem unnecessary to check everything like this, but I like to follow what happens in order to avoid hard to find errors down the line. So let's hide left and right profiles in character animator and start by rigging the standing profile. First thing I do is inside head I change the origin to where the head connects to the body and also make sure it's tagged both head and neck. Next I select body folder and put some fixed pins on the feet so that my character will stand steady. Next up is the arms. First we make sure both arms are independent by checking the crown icon left to the folders. Then I select right arm and place the origin at the shoulder and tag it right shoulder. Then I put a handle at the elbow and tag it right elbow. And then I put a dragger at the wrist so I'll be able to control it with mouse movement and tag it right wrist. Last but not least, I add sticks between the handles we've just put out. Alright, let's move on to the left one, same procedure, origin move to shoulder and tag left shoulder, handle at elbow, tag left elbow, dragger at wrist, tag left wrist and sticks between them all. Great, now let's see how this all turns out in the scene by clicking that clapperboard icon. Set rest pose and I mean it looks alright. I do some adjustments to the puppet that I usually do and it's totally for personal preference but for example I think the head position and tilt strength are way too sensitive by default. And I also like to set my draggers to return to rest with one second duration. I want the upper part of the torso to move a little more to my camera tracking so I just put the head origin a little lower. That's one thing in general I really dig with character animator that you can just seamlessly tweak origins and handles in order to get that right type of movement that you want. Alright let's have a look at the head rig. When it comes to the mouth I use two variations one happy slash neutral mouth and then one alt mouth for more negative or sad expressions. Uh, the most easy rig setup is obviously just having one mouth group, but since I really want those two variations on my puppet, I'll go through the steps for that here. So instead of just one mouth group, we'll have this group called talk. And within that group, we'll have the plus mouth group as well as the plus alt mouth group. By looking at the structure of the two groups, they look the same, but if we go into the Photoshop rig quickly, we see that the alt mouth group is mostly just a copied mouth group with flipped mouth artwork. Obviously also just some adjustments to the tongue and stuff like that. I mean, we don't want the tongue to appear from the top, right? So back in character animator, we make sure both mouth and alt mouth are tagged mouth. And in order to let character animator know when to use which mouth set, we'll go up here and create a swap set on the talk folder, which gives us the option to swap between the two with triggers. I'll just go for A on normal mouth and obviously I want that to be the default mouth and then S on the alt mouth. I also check latch so that I just need to press once in order to activate. Now, one last thing we need to do to the mouth groups is to check inside and see if the mouth groups contain specific groups within them. And if so, we select all of them and give them the cycle layers behavior just so character animator understand that when that specific mouth expression is triggered, it should run through all drawings within that group. With all three of them still selected, I go down in the uh, behavior options to the right and check hold on last layer and stop immediately on trigger end. Now the exact same process on alt mouth, 
select all groups, add cycle layers, behavior, and check hold on last layer and stop immediately on trigger end. Alright, quick check in the scene to see that the mouth works and when I hit S my alt mouth triggers and then I can actually hit S again to just go back to default mouth or hit A and it works perfectly. Let's do the eyes, quick check so the left and right eyebrows are tagged properly shown in blue. If they are named correctly, they should be automatically tagged, but if they are not, for some strange reason, you can always do it manually. Next up, left eye seems to be tagged left eye, and the left blink group seems to be correctly tagged as well. And since that group contains blink layers from no blink to full blink, I want to give that group the cycle layers behavior, just like we did to some mouth groups earlier. This time though, when down in the behavior options, I want both forward and reverse checked as well as hold on last layer and then do the exact same thing on the right blink. Left and right pupil seems to be tied correctly and let's see what happens when we go into the scene. Blinks works great, eyebrows as well, pupils are a bit too crazy for my taste and uh, we fix that by going down in the eye gaze under properties. First off, I always prefer controlling my character's uh, pupils with keyboard instead of the uh, camera and then keyboard strength put down to somewhere close to 70. Now let's go even lower, 52. Alright, perfect. Last thing on my standing character is of course he need a few dangles on that hair so I first make sure both my hair layers are independent layers with the crown icon checked. Then I go in on the hair layer and move the origin to the base and then add a dangle at the opposite end of the artwork. Same thing with hair too. And with that our standing base is done. Quick check in the scene and everything seems fine. Alright, now it's time to rig the left profile. Go back into rig mode and hide the standing folder and make sure only to see the left profile in order to avoid mixing things up. First select head folder and make sure it's tagged head and move the origin to where it connects to the body. Then we also want it tagged neck. Next, select the uh, body and add a handle to the midsection and tag it waist. Moving on to the limbs, I select the left arm and move the origin to the shoulder. Oh, and by the way, let's make sure both arms and both legs are independent object by checking the crown on all of them. I move their respective origins in place. And let's start by rigging the right arm. The origin I tag right shoulder. I add a handle at the elbow and tag it right elbow and a dragger tag right wrist. Same procedure on the left arm. Origin tag left shoulder. Handle on elbow tag elbow and dragger tag left wrist. Left leg we tag origin as left hip, handle at the knee tag left knee and then also handles placed and tagged left ankle, left heel and left toe. Exact same thing on right leg, origin tag right hip, handles at right knee, right ankle, right heel and right toe, all tagged correctly. With arms and legs tagged, we select the body group again and add handles on these green little dots that represent our limbs origins. One handle tagged left shoulder, one handle tagged right shoulder, one handle tagged right hip, and one handle tagged left hip. Phew! Let's just see how things look in the scene. All white.
Well, that's probably because I hid the standing profile. Yeah, let's make all of them visible and check the scene once again. And that's better, but obviously not good. And the reason we see two profiles right now is probably that character animator don't really know what to do with the unrigged right profile as of right now. It's all good though, we'll fix that one later. I just want to see if it can walk right now and I'd like to control the walk behavior with arrow keys. So I'm setting that up in the walk behavior properties down to the right like that. So now when I hit the left key he is walking. And even though there might be some tweaking to be done, I can clearly see that things are working as they should from a rig point of view. Which is nice. Let's go back into rig mode and do that whole rigging process all over again on the right side. The process is essentially exactly the same as we did to the left side, so I'll speed things up a little bit on here. Head origin in place and tag neck, handle on body in midsection tag waist, arms and legs made into independent objects. Origins moved in place and tagged, arms and legs rigged, handles added and tagged on left top of the green limb origin dots visible on body group. Kapow! Also important not to forget in all this rigging and tagging that much like I talked about in the uh, introduction, only standing profile should have uh, the legs fixed. And now as I go into the scene, we see... Nothing. Damn it, I should have learned this by now, but I figured the mistakes might be helpful to someone out there. All groups should be visible in the rig mode. Fixed. Back into the scene. And yes. Now that I got a puppet that I see the walk setup is working on, I'll just finish the right rig's uh, head just like I did to the left one. Again, speeding things up here, but I do the mouth and alternative mouth variations and I read the eyes the blinks and make sure eyebrows work correctly and of course also the dangles to the hair. So what it boils down to from now on is only some tweaking here and there in order to get the type of walk you want and it also varies heavily depending on your puppet artwork. I'll show some things I've done to my character here, but it's not a promise that it will work on yours. I'd say there are three ways of tweaking here. Tweaks on the rig, tweaks on the walk behavior, and tweaks on the artwork. First, we can tweak the actual rig by moving origins, for example. I don't really like how my skull logo is distorted during the walk, so I go in and change the origin to my left profile character, and it immediately looks better. Another thing is on the legs where I didn't add sticks because I wanted this kind of rubbery look. Uh, but, I now, but now I feel I want sticks so I just go in on each leg and add between the handles just like I did with the arms. Let's check out the uh, walk behavior quickly. There's no reason to really go through things too much on here. If you got this far, I'm sure you can play with the, with the settings yourself. Uh, you can change body speed if you want him to actually move while walking, which isn't something I've ever used since I always export and comp in After Effects. You can change step speed and stride length and a whole bunch of settings that I'm going to sit down and tweak later. The last tweaking part I mentioned is that you can of course whenever you want to change the artwork as well, to get that right thing working for your specific walk. I see there are some ugly gaps happening where my legs connect to my body for example, so I just go into Photoshop and fix that on the uh, uh, right and left profiles. I suggest you go in and tweak on all three, these three areas in order to get that right type of walk that you want. I'm happy with my character right now and some final adjustments I made for example is I didn't really like how my standing body was only moving the absolute upper body so I selected the standing group in rig mode and changed attach to to Chris and with independent checked selected free and got a more smooth looking standing character. I also played around trying to figure out the best rig for my legs and ended up with sticks on upper legs but not between knee and ankle. I also put sticks between the handles in the feet. And with that, I now have a fully rigged walking puppet that can be 
an incredible time saver. So that's it friends, I hope you found this tutorial helpful and if you want to see more animations and tutorials from me, make sure to subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. Come hang out with me on my weekly animation streams on Twitch and there's a bunch of other links to Discord and whatnot in the description to this video. Check that out and Skull Cult forever, see you next time!